So once we amplify a gene of interest, once we produce many identical copies of a single gene, what exactly do we do next? Well, usually the next process is to take that gene and produce a restriction map for that particular gene. Now, what exactly is a restriction map? Well, let's suppose that we have the following ruler and this ruler describes our gene of interest that we amplified. So this is the double-stranded DNA molecule that describes the interest that, uh, that describes the gene that we're studying. So what a restriction map is, is it's basically a description of all the different locations found on this gene where our restriction enzymes can bind to and cleave that gene. So for example, let's suppose this gene has three different restriction sites. So here, here, and here. And what that means is a type of restriction enzyme can bind onto these three locations and cleave that particular gene at those locations. So that's what we mean by a restriction map. Now, what exactly is the procedure in creating the restriction map? Well, the restriction map basically involves, the, or creating the restriction map involves a process known as gel electrophoresis, and this will be the focus of this lecture. So we're going to focus on the process of gel electrophoresis that is used in the creation of the restriction map for any particular uh, gene. So let's suppose we look at diagram A. In diagram A, we have the following gene shown in black. So this is our gene. Let's suppose we expose this gene, this gene here, to a specific type of restriction enzyme we're going to call enzyme number one. Now, what happens is, once we expose the gene to this restriction enzyme, the restriction enzyme cuts or cleaves this gene at two different locations. So at this location, somewhere here, and in this location, somewhere here. So at the end, once we expose this gene to this enzyme, we get three different DNA fragments. So we have DNA fragment one, DNA fragment two, and DNA fragment three. And these fragments all came from this entire gene. Now, once we take, once we obtain these fragments, we now expose the fragments to the process of gel electrophoresis. And what this process does is it ultimately separates these three DNA fragments that came from the gene based on their physical size. So what exactly is gel electrophoresis? Well, it's basically the process by which we take our fragments, we place them into a special type of porous gel, and then we allow those fragments to move through the pores of the gel as a result of an electric field that exists within that gel. So we take the apparatus, we connect the apparatus to a voltage source, and that creates an electric potential difference, a voltage difference between these two sides of that electrophoresis setup. And so what happens is, because we connect it to our battery source, one end of that plate will have a negative charge, so that will be the cathode, and the other end will have a positive charge, that will be the anode. Now remember, DNA contains a negative charge as a result of all those phosphate groups. And so all these DNA fragments that came from the gene will contain negative charge, and they will move from the cathode, the negatively charged side, to the anode, the positively charged side. So all these fragments will move along the same direction, but they will move at different speeds. And that's because if we examine the gel inside this setup, that gel is basically a special type of polymer that contains many different pores, and these pores basically contain a certain size to them. And so the larger DNA fragments, the larger molecules, will find it more difficult to move along these pores, while the smaller fragments will find it easier to move along and through these pores because of their smaller physical size and smaller physical weight. So in gel electrophoresis, different fragments are separated on the basis of physical size.
the larger molecules are not able to move as quickly as the smaller ones through the pores of that gel. Now, since DNA fragments are all negatively charged, they all move along the same direction. They always move from the cathode, the negatively charged side, to the anode, the positively charged side. And this voltage difference is created because this entire structure is connected to a battery source. So this is what gel electrophoresis is. So the way that we create the restriction map is by exposing this initial gene to many different types of restriction enzymes. For example, in case A, we expose the gene to restriction enzyme number one and we form three different fragments as shown that have these different sizes. Now in case B, we take that same initial gene but now we expose it to a different restriction enzyme which cuts at different locations along that gene. So now instead of producing these three fragments, we only produce two fragments because this gene only contains one site, one location where this restriction enzyme number two can actually act on. So now we produce fragment four and fragment five and once again, we expose these two fragments, we place these two fragments into our gel, and now we have the separation based on size. And we can compare this diagram to this diagram, and we can use the information obtained to basically create a restriction map. So if we examine the following diagram right over here, we see that for this particular case, this fragment is this fragment here and notice it is closest to the anode because it is the smallest and it is able to move the farthest along and through the pores of the gel. This fragment is basically fragment two, this fragment is fragment three. Now what about this case? Well notice that fragment 3 is almost the same size as fragment 4 and so these two will correspond to the same exact position, horizontal position along the following diagram. Now this is the largest fragment of these five fragments and so it will be found highest, farthest up along the following plate. So we have the largest fragment, these two fragments are about the same size, then the next fragment, and the smallest fragment, fragment number one. So let's take a marker and let's label these just so we know. So this is fragment number one, fragment number two, fragment number three, fragment number four, and fragment number five. So this is what gel electrophoresis is. Now, when we'll get into biochemistry, we're going to see that we can use gel electrophoresis not only for DNA molecules, but we can also use uh, for proteins. We can basically separate our proteins by their physical size using the same exact process of gel electrophoresis.